These people committed murders that shook the world. No one could have had any idea of the terrible cost that lay ahead. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 notorious assassins in history. Kuklinski kept his criminal life secret from his family and neighbors. He told them he was a businessman. No one knew his business was murder. For this list, we're looking at people that have made an impact on history by committing targeted murders of prominent individuals or important figures. From that night onward, the catcher in the rye haunted the investigation of Lenin's death. Number 10, Sirhan Sirhan, target Robert F. Kennedy. A doctor, we need a doctor right here. There's a microphone, please, immediately. Born into a Palestinian Christian family, Sirhan Sirhan was radical in his beliefs against Israel. I'm not mentally ill, sir, but I'm not perfect either. In fact, when he learned that Senator Robert Kennedy supported Israel in the Arab-Israeli conflict, he was extremely offended. One night as Senator Kennedy was walking through a crowd in a hotel, Sirhan shot Kennedy three times, resulting in fatal injuries. We are a great country, and a selfish country, and a compassionate country, and I intend to make that my basis for running in over the period of years. Since Kennedy was the front-runner in the Democratic presidential race, his death largely influenced the election of Richard Nixon. The great objective of this administration at the outset to bring the American people together. This assassination was not only a big news story, but ultimately affected the course of history. If you had three wishes, what would they be? The first wish that... I wish that Tyler Kennedy was still alive. Number nine, Ramon Mercader, target Leon Trotsky. He had no job, but he always had plenty of money. And mysteriously, nobody ever asked him why he had all this money and no job. Growing up in France, Ramon Mercader lived under the influence of his mother, who worked for leftist organizations. Mercader believed in this ideology and was recruited to become a Soviet spy. He was somebody whose name everybody knew all over the Soviet Union and all over the world. And so to Stalin, he was um, the fact that he wouldn't immediately accept Stalin's leadership. He was the main threat. Meanwhile, Russian revolutionist Leon Trotsky was exiled after criticizing Joseph Stalin and promoting socialism. He would always come to Trotsky with some half-finished manuscripts that he would ask for criticism of. And Trotsky was very willing to give him this criticism. As a spy, Mercader befriended Trotsky by pretending to sympathize with him. In August 1940, Mercader attacked Trotsky with an ice pick and he died the next day. He hit him in the brain and, according to his later testimony, heard the longest, loudest scream he had ever heard in his life. His death created a setback for the socialist movement and promoted the global dominance of Stalinism. Ramon Mercader spent the next 20 years in a Mexican jail under pleasant circumstances negotiated between socialist Mexico and the Soviet Union. Number 8. Sogomon Telerian, target Talat Pasha. Born in the Ottoman Empire, Sogomon Telerian moved to Russia to join the army in 1914. However, while he was there, the Ottoman police ordered all Armenians, including his family, to be deported, and they were all killed, among up to 1.5 million others in the Armenian Genocide. Soon after, Telerian joined a secret program that targeted officials behind the genocide called Operation Nemesis. He rented an apartment near Talat Pasha, one of the Ottoman rulers, in order to follow his every move. On March 15, 1921, Telerian shot and killed Pasha in broad daylight. However, he was acquitted by his jury. Not guilty. And is considered a hero by many Armenians. Number 7. Richard Leonard the Iceman Kuklinski. Target, multiple. When I was a young man, I found out that if you hurt somebody, they'll leave you alone. Good guys do finish last. Growing up in a gang, Richard Kuklinski killed his first victim at age 14. After he continued to kill, the Mafia began to recognize this ability. I say if I were to do somebody, I want at least five figures. He soon became a hitman of New Jersey's De Cavalcante crime family and was responsible for killing and disposing of those he killed. He developed the nickname The Iceman because he would often freeze victims. Law enforcement authorities have arrested one of the most notorious contract killers in state history. In December 1986, he was caught and tried for five murders, several of which were his collaborators. 
is of such a diabolical, methodical type of killer that it's very possible that when all is said and done, we still may never know how many people he has actually killed. However, law officials suspect that he's responsible for between 100 and 200 murders after he confessed in several interviews. He died in 2006 under mysterious circumstances at the St. Francis Medical Center at the age of 70. I am probably the loneliest person in the world because I have nothing I care for and I can't make any friends to have any kind of a relationship or so I've lost everything. Number six, Daniel James Dan White, target Harvey Milk. This is former supervisor Dan White a few weeks ago on the day he resigned from office, saying the job didn't pay enough to support his family. A conservative San Francisco supervisor, Dan White was upset by the tolerance of homosexuality. On November 10, 1978, White resigned when he felt his salary was insufficient, but backtracked a few days later and requested to be reappointed. However, Mayor George Moscone, along with other supervisors, including Harvey Milk, the problems that affect this city affect all of us, the first gay person to hold public office, intervened, and the board members elected a liberal official instead. George Moscone, the, the mayor of San Francisco, was shot dead in his office in City Hall this morning. So was Harvey Milk. On the 27th of that same month, White then fatally shot Moscone and Milk while they were at City Hall. Instead of first-degree murder, White was sentenced to seven years in prison for manslaughter thanks to the Twinkie defense. After serving only five, the city ostracized him and he committed suicide. This assassination took away one of the first gay rights activists. Once they realize that we are indeed their children and we are indeed everywhere, every myth, every lie, every innuendo will be destroyed once and for all. And once once you do, you will feel so much better. Number five, Mark David Chapman, target John Lennon. I even heard a voice, my own, inside of me say, do it, do it, do it. Mark David Chapman grew up as a longtime fan of the Beatles. In fact, two days after he bought John Lennon's newly released album, he waited outside Lennon's apartment for an autograph. Later he would say, it was as if Lennon had recognized his destiny and had foreseen that their two paths would converge. Lennon agreed, and also allowed a photographer to take a picture of him with Chapman. However, Chapman remained near Lennon's apartment until the musician returned home later that night. And I just pulled the trigger steady five times. Shockingly, Chapman fired five shots at Lennon, four of which hit him and soon after caused his death. Millions of people mourned the tragic death of John Lennon today. The young and the middle-aged shared a sense of grief over the inexplicable slaying of Lennon. Chapman later said he killed him because, quote, he was very famous. Though he had already turned on the former Beatle because of his more popular than Jesus comment. His lawyer sought an insanity plea, but Chapman pled guilty and was sentenced to life imprisonment with psychiatric treatment. Number four, Gavrilo Princip, target, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. Born in Bosnia, Gavrilo Princip was trained in terrorism by the secret Serbian society Black Hand. Being a South Slav nationalist, Princip sought to take down Austro-Hungarian rule in order to unite the South Slav peoples. Therefore, he wished to assassinate the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand. An associate first threw a bomb that bounced off the convertible carrying Franz Ferdinand and subsequently detonated under a nearby car, allowing the procession to make its way to town hall. And the Archduke stops right in front of him. He can't believe his luck. He can't believe his luck. They're only a meter away. He gets two shots before somebody leaps on him. It was during the motorcade's drive to the hospital to visit the bomb victims that Princip had his chance to shoot Ferdinand and his wife Sophie on June 28, 1914. This assassination instigated the war between Austria-Hungary and Serbia and the First World War. Number three, James Earl Ray, target Martin Luther King Jr. First of all, I'm not a federal prisoner. No. James Earl Ray had a long criminal history, serving jail sentences for different crimes in the 50s and 60s. 
In addition, Ray had racist beliefs, being against the integration policies that were taking place. The greatness of America is the right to protest the right. In 1968, Ray rented a room in the same motel at which civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. was staying. As King stood on a balcony, Ray shot him in the face, and the single bullet was enough to ultimately kill him. Ray fled to Canada and then to England, but he was caught and sentenced to 99 years in prison. April 4, 1968 will forever be remembered as the day Ray took away the life of a great civil rights leader. Number 2. John Wilkes Booth, Target, Abraham Lincoln He appears to be, in fact, the first American actor who had his clothes ripped by fans when he was coming out of the theater one night. He was adored. Unlike other assassins, John Wilkes Booth had established a good reputation for himself as one of the most popular actors of his time. However, during the Civil War, Booth supported the Confederates. He viewed the South as the ideal type of society. When President Abraham Lincoln granted freedom to slaves, Booth decided that it was the last speech he would ever make. Suddenly, a shot rang out through the auditorium. When Lincoln attended the play, Our American Cousin, Booth slipped into Lincoln's booth and shot him in the head. But even though Booth took Lincoln's life, the Union was still able to win the war. The platforms fell. The four condemned conspirators dropped to their death. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Federal District Judge John Roll tries to help Barber and is later shot in the back. McKinley extended his to shake the hand and instead, Kolgosh fired point blank at the president. Number one, Lee Harvey Oswald, target John F. Kennedy. The idea that a, a person could take this piece of junk and hit a moving target is ludicrous. Even though there are countless conspiracy theories surrounding JFK's death, Lee Harvey Oswald was the man ultimately arrested for assassinating President John F. Kennedy. After being court-martialed in the military for violent behavior, Oswald moved to the Soviet Union where he hoped to defect, but ultimately worked and got married. He eventually returned to Texas, where Kennedy was scheduled to visit. On November 22, 1963, while Kennedy was traveling through Texas, Oswald shot Kennedy three times from the Texas Book Depository while the presidential motorcade drove by. President Kennedy and Governor John Colony have been cut down by assassin's bullets in downtown Dallas. Two days later, as he was being brought to the county jail, nightclub operator Jack Ruby shot Oswald in plain view out of rage. Kennedy's assassination had a massive impact on America, creating hysteria and a distrust in federal institutions. Do you agree with our list? I don't think I would have said no. Who do you think is the most notorious assassin? For more informational top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. He is the ultimate eternal threat, and we want you to go out and share it.